Uh, thanks, Phil, and, and I will be quick because, um, because lunch marches on. And isn't it interesting how um, Phil uh, has already planted in your mind uh, the fact that I'm much older than he is? Because one, he said it earlier, and two, he's just confirmed that I've retired, so that must mean I'm older. And uh, just, just hold that because I want to, um, I want to come back to that. Um, uh, and Malcolm has just handed me this. This is the, um, this is the mic thing that ensures you can hear me. And um, just recently, I was doing RICS surveys in practice, and um, uh, and the uh, the organizer handed me that that little <laughs> machine. But um, um, at my age, as Phil has said, um, I have to go to the loo every 15 minutes. Uh, and I did, and, um, <laughs> and it fell out, and it fell out, it fell into the loo. Um, but it still works, so I didn't give it any more thought. Um, at the end of my bit, I handed over to the next speaker, and, um, and it stopped working. It stopped working, and, and we stopped for lunch. And he said, oh, bloody thing, it stopped working. And the batteries were all wet. What was all that about? <laughs> um, uh, and I didn't tell him. So, <laughs> so um, yeah, so surveying. We, we've heard how, uh, how surveying is. It, it's about the usual stuff, isn't it? And as a chartered building surveyor, uh, for me, surveying has been, has been uh, cracks, damp, the usual stuff, the usual suspects. And, um, and so I thought we'd talk... Um, about, uh, about climate change. And, and so clearly, if we're going to talk about climate change, um, we need to start with the first principles, which is, uh, which is juggling. Which is juggling. And it um, didn't take me long to learn juggling. Anybody here can juggle? Who here can juggle? Yeah, Phil? Um, yeah, juggling. It's quite easy, actually. It only takes about 30 minutes. And, um, and there is a point to this. There is a point to this. So... Um, Actually, before I do, before I do juggle, hands up. Who believes? Who thinks I can juggle? Hands up. Who thinks I can juggle? Yeah. So a fair number of people in the room um, believe I can juggle, and that's there for a fact. You know I can juggle, and you can leave today knowing I can juggle. I don't think I'll bother to <laughs> demonstrate my skill. But but that's the first point I'd like to make, which is that actually in life, it's not what you say. It's not what you do that is important, it's how you make people feel. It is what they believe about you. So you now know, just as you know that I'm so much older than Phil, although in practice I can tell you there's a 10 year difference and it's you know, the other way. Uh, you only got to put us together and, you, and you'll see that. But you, st you now know that, that I'm older than Phil, but you now know that I can juggle. I'll tell you what, if, um, if, uh, if we've got time I, I will show you. So, so, look, I'd suggest to you that, that, that surveying, yes, it is about cracking. It is about contra-rotational movement. It is about that sort of stuff. It's about knotweed. But I think it's on, that is only half of the story of being a surveyor. And for me, the other half is relationships. And, and just standing at the back there, uh, listening as I was to, to Malcolm, there's an article here in the Sava magazine, verbal reporting by... Um, uh, by John Wheatley, who's, uh, who's one of our, uh, our trainers. And he starts off with, discussions between surveyors and their clients are invaluable. And I'll bet if I ask for another little straw poll, that that would get a unanimous, um, that would get a unanimous yes. So, so this sort of stuff, climate change, yes, it is important. This sort of stuff, movement and dampness and DPCs and rising dampness, if it exists, um, I believe it does. Hygroscopic salts. All this stuff is really important. How you stop the dampness is really important. The residual cr uh, movement is really important, how it dries out. And if buildings are complicated, then by God, so are relationships. And relationships, I suggest to you, are absolutely fundamental to being a surveyor. It doesn't matter whether you're a, a building surveyor, a valuation surveyor, agricultural surveyor relationships between people are absolutely fundamental. So yes, all the modern stuff that Phil was talking about, the modern survey gear. So drones, for example, great, I've had loads of fun. We did a job just recently down at Gatwick with drones. It was really good fun. <laughs> it was brilliant, we really enjoyed ourselves. But we had to leave fairly sharpish, but um, we got paid. And um, that is really important, but so are relationships, okay? 
And the three usual suspects, so movement, damp and rot, um, and, uh, and woodworm, those things which actually address, were addressed in the Home Buyer Report about 20 years ago. If you remember the old Home Buyer Report, I mean, most of you are too, too young to remember the old ho Home Buyer Report, the second version. But that was based on the three main suspects that really upset people, which is structural movement and uh, problems associated with dampness and rot. And those three, that was based on client feedback or customer feedback. Um, so talking to clients and relationships are really really important. Okay, I just threw that one in there for a little giggle. I knew, I knew I'd get a giggle somewhere. So, so, if, um, so if relationships, be they lots and lots of relationships are important to you, um, and I suggest that they are extremely important and just as important as whether or not you can diagnose that crack. Uh, and that little tip uh, by Malcolm, really good one, really good one. There's the plane of movement. And there's the arrows pointing you to where the uh, movement is likely to be. So relationships, be they many or, or be they um, only one, be they only one, and, and property purchases, because that's what we're dealing with, they deal with these things. They deal with people. Behind every one of your surveys and valuations that you, that we, get involved in, there are people. Behind every front door, there are stories and, and I'd suggest to you it's really, really important that we understand the fact that we deal with people's lives. And the impact that we have on people and their people's lives is absolutely massive. And Phil is heavily involved in the... Um, um, it's my wife, by the way, and, uh, and some of my children. But it's absolutely fundamental. Now, I'm not suggesting that you have to talk to the client and discover the, the names and, and, and ages of their children, but it's absolutely fundamental. You don't need to know that, uh, that my dad was um, in the Navy, that they got married at Shoreditch Church in London, etc. Et but just bear in mind, just bear in mind that relationships are fundamental. And so, just really quickly, um, just threw together uh, one or two slides based on my journey as a surveyor through, through the, the last um, um, yeah, 40 years, 1978, got qualified. Um, and that's, um, yeah, that's me, bouncy little baby. Um, and that's me when I had hair in Denmark, 1973, that is, in my wild years. Um, and I set up in practice in, 1970, in 1981. And if you look at that list, that's the list of sort of things that you might want to think about if you're setting up in practice. And those words all relate to legal stuff, accounting stuff, that you're going to be familiar with. But behind all of those words, there are people. There's the insurance broker. There's the solicitor, the accountant. And so even from the absolute beginning of your practice as a surveyor, you will be developing relationships relationships that potentially in time turn into work. So, so why aren't we, why aren't we, Malcolm there talking about secretly slipping in little bits into the course that he's doing, why aren't we doing more on our courses at, at university, at Polytechnic, if you're, if you're that old, um, about relationships? Yes, it is important to buy a house in the right place that isn't in the flood area, I just happen to live there. But it's just as important, it's just as important that you know how to deal with people. If, as, as John says in his article, and if, as Phil alludes to, it is so important that we talk to clients before we do the survey and then talk to them afterwards, we need to know stuff like, like body language. Okay, you might not be talking to them face to face. Um, but if you're not talking to them face to face, how important is it to know that 7% of communication, only 7% are the words, and the rest of it is physical or mental up here? Only, uh, in terms of communications, only 7% relates to the words because it goes back to that original thing. It's not what you say, it's not what you do, it's how you leave people feeling. So one of the things I tried to be as a professional, as a child surveyor, was be professional. So 
I've always tried to put the clients first. The difference, by the way, between clients and customers is clients pay you more money than customers. That's always been my view. You get more fee out of clients. So I've always tried to have clients. But put them first. Try and give them the best service and, and, and follow the RICS guidance. Really important. So read the documents. Um, and then if you do all that, you will have happy clients. And what do happy clients mean? Uh, happy clients mean that they will continue to come back and continue to refer you. Continue to refer you. Because let's face it, we all know, don't we, most people know, that if you do a good job, if you're lucky, your client will tell three others. You do a bum job, they will go out of their way to tell at least 20. I had a survey, don't, oh God. And they only need to find one mistake, even one little spelling error in your report, and they'll go through the report quite rightly with a fine tooth comb and find all the other bits that you've, that you've made a mistake on. So, so I've always tried to be the best that I can be. My aim has always been to try to be the best chartered building surveyor in the UK. But bloody Phil Parnham won't retire, so I'm never going to get there. <laughs> Think about have a, having a quality management system. And you know what? A lot of us who are required to follow a quality management system, we sort of kick against it because most of us don't want to do what somebody else tells us. And so I got over that and I've got my own quality management system and that actually is the best quality management system that you can have, one that you write for yourself. So I started out with one side of A4 and wrote a paragraph and now I have 110,000 words which is my quality management system which other people just happen to follow um, in my practice. Um, and I review that. I'm, in, I'm on version 44 now of my quality management system. And, um, and uh, the other absolutely fundamental thing that I do, based on relationships, is, um, is I've got a couple of people in the town that I regularly swap files with. I w uh, and, I, and I absolutely would recommend that to you. If you're a sole practitioner, in particular, it can be quite lonely. It can be quite lonely. I've got a mate of mine um, who, who had a breakdown about 10 years ago. Sole practitioner, had a couple of claims. But m uh, myself and these other two chaps, we will regularly swap files. Here's my file, please give me uh, feedback. And that has really helped me over the years. One, it's given me um, a shoulder to cry on now and then. Uh, but two, it, it has helped me to improve my service. Because if I can try to become the best chartered building surveyor in the world, then then there is, an, there is a, the likelihood that I will get fewer claims. And I've had claims, I, I, you know, I, I'm, not, I'm not perfect. If you don't make at least one mistake on every valuation or every survey, you're probably not human. And I try to be human. So you, you need to have a quality management system. And, and yes, quality management systems, they are very, very technical, but ultimately they all to do with you dealing with that client. And, and and that relationship, that contractual liability and tortious liability that you've got with your client, that is a relationship. That is a relationship. Relationships are much more important than we, the profession, give credence to. Um, I became a fellow in 1981, and at that time, fellows weren't required to do uh, CPD as it was then. And the, the requirement for CPD for fellows only came in in, um, in 1991. But I began diligently from 1981 to do CPD. I've always done my 20 hours um, ever since then. Um, and you're here, I mean, I'm preaching to the converted, I know that. I've always, always welcomed client feedback. And yeah, once or twice it's been, well, the flaming thing took too long. Or whatever it was, or he didn't address the issue that I specifically asked him to. I act on it. The minute I get anything like that, I'm on the phone to them, talking to them. Because I don't want them thinking that they haven't been dealing with a, an old, gr uh, well, grey, uh, pink, um, chartered surveyor who, who doesn't care about them and the, single biggest, um, and the single biggest purchase in their life. So, and so far as claims are concerned, um, I've just learned from them. So I've altered my systems. Uh, and that has been a, a, as a result of continuing um, discussions with, with PI insurers. PI insurers love 
love you if you do, uh, if you do uh, reflect, if you do reflect on, um, on what you've done in the past and, and to the extent to which you improve the service that you provide. So yeah, really important that you understand uh, about, about um, all, all the ground in your area. This is uh, Kings Lynn where I practice and, uh, and, where, the, and where the coastline was in, in 1066 when Harold got one in the eye um, and, and William came over. Uh, but just as important that we understand, um, understand about, about relationships. Um, and one of the other things that uh, I have always done is to surround myself with good people. Why do you think I joined Blue Box? Um, it's because the trainers in Blue Box are absolutely second to none. And I just hang on to their coattails. I've learned so much from people like Phil, Chris, um, because by God they are at the absolute top of their profession. You need to do all this stuff. You need to do all this stuff. You need to have good branding and advertising. And that, and that means finding people who can do it for you. Good people. And how do you find? You, you find it based on your relationships, based on the, the, uh, the friendships, the professional relationships that you build up in time. Um, now, I'm not suggesting that you have to uh, necessarily try to become the best in the world, the best defender, the best absolute football ever, the best goalkeeper ever, the best Northern Irish um, attacker, uh, and the best, um, the best English um, forward that there ever has been, but I'm a Spurs fan. Um, I'm not so saying that you have to do that, but what are, the, what are these people, uh, what do these people demonstrate? One, they've striven to be the best, and two, they appreciate that you can't do it on your own, that we need to be doing it as a team. So even in firms, you see, you see relationship issues, um, even if you're working in a larger firm, even if you're not working by yourself, in a larger firm you can, just be, you can be just as much on your own. Try not to be like that. Try to reach out. Try, try to reach out and build relationships which will later on come back. If you give, if you give in relationship, it will come back to you twice, threefold, in my experience. And, and in that regard, I just wanted to um, almost end on, on one thing, and that is professional networking. For me, professional networking has been absolutely fundamental. Now, I've done non-professional networking in the sense that it doesn't sound particularly right, in the sense that I got pretty heavily involved in, in RICS early in my career, and I became secretary and chairman of the Building Surveyors Division in East Anglia, I became chairman and blah, blah, blah. But, but 20 years ago, I joined this organisation called BNI, Business Network International. I know there's at least one other member here who's in BNI. Anybody else here in BNI? Yeah. Yeah, now, now I, I, I could ask you, and we haven't got time because they're going to start wandering towards the front of the stage in a minute and saying, hmm. But for me, this has been absolutely fundamental in helping me to understand how relationships are so important. And if I can say one thing to you, I passed one referral in this organisation um, six and a half years ago. One referral to, to another person who I met at one of these networking meetings. That has been worth to me and the company that my wife and I run. That has been worth more than eight million pounds worth of invoice business. Just one referral based on one relationship that I helped to develop. I've, pay, I've passed another referral to a roofing contractor, for example, and just that one referral has, uh, has been worth um, one million pounds to him as a roofer. Based on so I would really recommend that you look at professional networking. Uh, that's just a, another example of me with a beard. Uh, again, developing relationships. It doesn't necessarily have to involve alcohol, but it sometimes helps. This is another example. This is uh, from left to right, the local MP, a client, and it introduced me to lots of other clients. Um, the mayor, a client, uh, 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 Campbell Soups, big client on their factories. Uh, insurance broker, masses of, uh, uh, of work. Up the top there, a printer has recommended me on a regular basis. 
Um, down here, local uh, Indian, uh, sorry, Chinese restaurant owner recommended me no end of times. <coughs> NatWest Bank there on the left, uh, ditto. Um, police officer in from, from choir there, police officer, got me off all sorts of charges. <laughs> uh, and this is Jet, if anybody remembers Gladiators. Uh, my wife's here, so I'm not going to talk about that. Um, so yeah, radon, really, really important, hasn't done much for my hair, but, um, but ultimately I suggest it basically comes down to love. It comes down to, it comes down to uh, what gaineth it a man what does a man gain if, and nowadays we have to say woman as well, and absolutely spot on right, what does it gain a person if they achieve the world but loseth their soul? Do you really want to get to the end of your professional career and you might have accumulated lots of money but you're left behind lots of enemies and, um, and there's not going to be anybody there at your funeral? Apparently at your funeral, if, um, if it rains, there's going to be 50% less people at your funeral than it would be if it were dry. <laughs> Just a little bit of info there that you can throw in. So, so the Dalai Lama almost gets us there. Almost gets us there. I try in my life to, to, to leave people with a smile to give something that is positive. So that at the end of the conversation, whatever, the, the, the passing moment, as, I, as we pass like ships, hopefully not in the night, then I, I've given them something positive ra rather than negative. Um, and that's based on, in no small way on this BNI principle, which is give as gain, which is uh, you give, you will get back. You will get back. That's worked for me and I really would rec uh, recommend. Um, uh, Secondly, based on, on the other principle, which is no like trust. And this is what networking does for you. This is what building relationships does. If somebody knows you and they like you and they trust you, they will give you work. And I think it's really, it's really important <coughs> that, yes, we, we do adopt all the new, you know, the bits of the, the proby things that enable you to take photographs of spiders' webs and all the rest of it, and the drones, and the long ladders, and, and, the, and the selfie sticks. But it's still important to remember the basics that we are dealing with people. We're dealing with people's lives, and, um, and what we say and do um, can, uh, can affect people. So this is what you want to be at the end of your life, just like Chris. You want to be sitting on a nice warm beach, rather than stressed to hell. Stressed to hell. And even if you don't accept that and when you just go back to the basic of surveying, it can take you years to build that re reputation up. Just one silly comment, just one silly word can smash it. Remember Ratners? Just one, just one comment. You just think what that has done to that chap's life. So ultimately, surround yourself with radiators, people who are positive, not drains, people that drain you of emotion. And finally, finally, fees. D this is what I say. You phone my office, this is what I'll tell you. This is what the people in my office have been trained to say. You will find, if you are phoning around, that Larry is the most expensive surveyor in the area. And there are two reasons that I do that. One, I understand that in order to do a decent <coughs> job, particularly as I get older, I need more time. And two, that tends actually to push away the people who don't want to pay a good fee. In my experience, they're more likely to get upset with you in due course. So differentiate, differentiate yourself as a surveyor based on quality, not on price. I really do believe that. Because if people only want to pay peanuts, then they should get monkeys. And there was a really good joke there, but I'm not going to do it. And just, just in case you thought, oh, 20 minutes and it wasn't about surveying, we need to do a test, don't we? Because this is about surveying. So you need to write down or just think or have a chat. What bond is that on the left? What bond is that on the right? Yes, you're right. Well done. That's good. That, that, that's 30 minutes CPD now. You can, you can put it on your, you can put it on your, um, on your, on your list. So look. Give. Give. 
Give and you will receive. And honestly, in my experience, if you, if you give, then your life will be enriched. But if you remember, if you remember that that that's doesn't just apply to yourself, it applies to your clients, the people whose lives, you hold the lives of those people in your hands. When you're doing that survey, you've got their lives in your, in your hand. And there's nothing worse, I understand, than somebody doing that. <laughs> much better, much better to embrace them in a slightly different way. So help people. Help people and they in turn can help you. So be it the person who comes into your office for evaluation, to sell the home, to sell the commercial property, a survey, to the bank who are coming to you for commercial lending, it's a relationship. Work on it. Work on it. So think about, think about possibly learning not just about cracks, damp and rot, but about the people whose lives, whose lives your effects and if you can do that if you can do that um, then not only can you become possibly the best valuation agricultural uh, commercial building surveyor in the UK but you can become the best person that you in turn can be and that will enable you to one engage with your clients better and two help them in their lives so that they will remember you not as that drain but as that radiator. <laughs> Never done this before. <laughs> Can you eat the apple at the same time? I could try and eat the apple at the same time. So learning is actually quite easy to learn. You start with one, feet apart, same, same as your, uh, same as your um, shoulders, and you just do that. And if you do that for 10 minutes, you just learn, it runs through at eye level. Second bit, you just throw one first and throw the other one. Throw one first and throw the other one. The third bit is slightly more difficult. <coughs> what it needs is belief. What it needs is belief that you can do that without dropping them. And remember, it isn't what you say or do that's important. It's what people believe about you that's important. I am much older than he is. <laughs> Thank you very much.